Floodwaters may be receding in the upper Midwest, but the need for help remains, and today some area residents are doing something about it. More than 45 volunteers left early this morning to help with sandbagging efforts in the heavily flooded parts of Illinois. TV18 and WAZY sponsored the trip using a bus donated by Imperial Travel, and the volunteers are eager to get to work. I just uh, feel sorry for the people that's being affected by the high water uh, down there, and if there's anything I can do to relieve somebody that's been working there for the last week or so, I'd like to do that. Another volunteer, Fred Bergner, helped organize the trip. Now, he's been out to help before, and he says that inspired him to return. Because uh, I've got a lot of compassion for those folks down there. They're enduring an awful lot. I've talked with uh, farmers down there that have slept about two and a half to four hours a night for the last two weeks, and uh, they need a lot of help. They need all help they can get. Now, volunteers will spend the day working near the Illinois River, and we will bring you news of their efforts throughout the day. Well, some area residents are doing their part today to help with flood relief efforts in the upper Midwest. Nearly 45 volunteers left early this morning as part of an effort organized by TV18 and WAZY. The group is helping to sandbag along the Illinois River. One local farmer says he was moved to help after watching some dramatic TV footage. Well, I saw the picture of the livestock that was, uh, uh, the hogs in particular, that were swimming around getting on top of the hog houses. And uh, uh, there's just no way that those hogs would have survived. And being a, a, a livestock producer, I can sympathize with those people. Lily and the others will spend the entire day working in Illinois. Well, that's where Mike Pickett is right now. He's working with the, the group that went out this morning, and he says everyone is working hard. I talked to him earlier today. He tells us where the group is located and what they are doing. What I can tell you right now is that we're in a, a community called uh, Hillview. It's about two and a half miles off the levee along the Illinois River, maybe 60 miles upriver from St. Louis. Interesting situation here in that the uh, Illinois River is being backed up. What's happened is there is so much water in the Mississippi, and the Illinois normally flows into that. That's caused the Illinois, though, to back up, and it's actually reversing its normal motion. Normally, it would be flowing to the south, and now it's flowing to the north because of this. So what's happening is it's threatening the levee here. The projection is that it might go up another foot or so by Tuesday. What the people in this community are certainly hoping for is that by adding sandbags to the top of their levee, the river may well reach the top of the levee, but the sandbags will increase the size of the levee and it won't be able to go over the levee, and that's what they're really after. So the group that you took over this morning, what are they doing? Well, right now, the majority of them uh, are filling sandbags. I imagine the 40 people from Lafayette that got here knew very little about sandbags. They learned in about three minutes how to fill a sandbag. In about 10 minutes, they became experts, and I'd say that uh, in the past two or three hours, we've all filled thousands of sandbags. and. Uh, doing a pretty efficient job at it. There's a lot of sweat, I'll tell you, being exerted that may have been built up in Lafayette, but it's being spilled here in Illinois. When will you uh, head out to the levee to, to start uh, reinforcing the levee? Well, there is a group of people actually out right now uh, helping to load some sandbags onto uh, some boats that are going to help uh, secure a creek. But uh, the majority of us, we're told, will probably be out uh, taking these sandbags and, and stacking them on a levee sometime in the early afternoon today, so uh, I would imagine that that's just going to mean moving some different muscles. By about then, I'm sure everybody's backs or uh, forearms are going to be pretty tired from filling sandbags, so lifting them might just uh, use some different muscles and make things a little better for us. <laughs> You're all going to need back rubs by the time you get back. There's no question. A busload of folks from the Lafayette area has spent the day helping with sandbagging efforts along the Illinois River north of St. Louis. News Director Mike Pickett says they spent the morning about two and a half miles from the river, then moved out to a levee this afternoon. I was with a group of maybe a dozen people from Lafayette who joined up with some National Guardsmen and were trying to shore up with sandbags a levee that uh, is being threatened. They're expecting uh, that the river, the Illinois River, at this particular levee uh, to go up another foot and a half or so by Tuesday. And uh, there's only uh, about a foot of levee left, so the idea was to get some sandbags up above that uh, level that the river is likely to reach. And let me tell you, it was a job, but let me tell you this too. <laughs> there were some great workers out there, and uh, these people that, that volunteered to come over and make this trip really made an impact. Mike says the National Guard told the Lafayette group their efforts saved a day to a day and a half of work for the people in that area. We'll have more on the trip tonight at 11 and tomorrow at 6 o'clock.
There's an emergency evacuation order out for about 600 homes and businesses in South St. Louis, Missouri. The reason for the evacuation was a threat from floodwaters that might break loose a number of 30,000 gallon propane tanks. If the tanks break loose, it would release a highly flammable gas. Most of us have seen images from the flood-ravaged Midwest, but a group of area residents witnessed the flooding firsthand today. About 40 people woke up in Lafayette's darkness this morning to board a bus headed for Hillview, Illinois. For four, hour, four hours later, they were learning how to sandbag. The sandbagging site is about a mile and a half from the still-rising Illinois River. The sandbags were transported by truck to several points along an 11-mile levee. The group broke up and headed to different sites. The volunteers spent most of their day piling sandbags on the levee. Officials on the scene say they hope to raise the levee by a foot and a half because the river is expected to crest just below that height Tuesday. The volunteers worked all day before their return trip to Lafayette tonight. We'll show you more of what they saw and bring you their reactions at 6 and 11 tomorrow on Lafayette Live. The effort was organized by TV18 with assistance from WAZY Radio and Imperial Travel Service. Well, for weeks now, our neighbors to the west have been battling rising waters. Yesterday, a group of area residents picked up shovels and joined the fight. Suzanne Stevens and Hillary Wakay have our report. While most of the world slept yesterday, these Lafayette area residents were on their way to the flood-ravaged Midwest. They boarded a bus headed for Hillview, Illinois. They wanted to do their part to help fight the rising Illinois River. But first, they had to learn how to make a sandbag. You can become a, a, uh, a professional in about 15 minutes. Here's sort of how the process works. I open up the bag here for Roger, who puts the sand in. He puts in about two scoops. They say that that's the correct amount to put in. If you put in any more than that, then the bag won't seal right on the levee. I then hand the bag over to Troy, who ties it up. He ties it up securely so that the bag doesn't open. Well, I just said tie them three times. If not, they'll find the fingerprints on the bag and come after us. So we decided we'll tie them three times. And during the whole sandbagging process, time is of the essence. Can you tell me about how many sandbags you need a day? Uh, we're running between 30 and 60,000 a day. I can understand how they're tired. If people are out here for three or four weeks, a month at a time, you can get pretty tired, I can see. It. Well, when you're loading the, the tractors, everybody's doing it you know, pretty fast and you get pretty tired easily. The newly made sandbags and some of their makers then headed to the river. In Hillview, Illinois, Suzanne Stevens, TV 18 News. This is Hillary Wakay. The thousands of sandbags end up here. Each one has a place somewhere on 11 miles of levee along the Illinois River in the Hillview Drainage District. The water is mere inches from the top. The Army Corps of Engineers fears this water could raise another foot and a half, so they're trying to raise this levee by tonight so that this entire field won't be flooded out. <laughs> Started to put boards up down here. We brought that down from the Mississippi down here where they uh, taught the civilians how to put them up, and they're starting around the bend down there bringing it this way so we can concentrate on this about a two-mile stretch in there. It's got to be brought up about another foot. If the water goes over the top, it would only be a matter of days before the levee completely erodes. It's not an easy battle. The levee on the other side of the river has already broken through, flooding farmland, homes, and the local electric plant. Here, creeks look like rivers and rivers look like lakes. Local levee commissioners estimate the river, usually a thousand feet across, is already a quarter mile wide. All of it was a new experience for the volunteer team from Tippecanoe. It's hard work. Uh, this is probably the toughest right now passing the, uh, the bags down the relay to load the boats. Some of the bags are heavier than others and you're not prepared for it. Sandbaggers also battle the heat. Along the levee there isn't any shade. I figured it'd be something like this. I was afraid it was going to be a lot more sloppy than this though, but really I don't think it's too bad other than it's hot. One National Guardsman has already seen three levees disintegrate. He says this situation looks more hopeful because the levee here is made of clay and dirt and not sand like the others. Levy commissioners expect the river to crest Tuesday. In Hillview, Illinois, Hillary Wakay, TV18 News. For the last month, we've been inundated by pictures of flooding in the upper Midwest. Most of us have only seen the images on TV. But yesterday, a group of area residents saw it with their own eyes. Suzanne Stevens and Hillary Wakay have our reports. 
About 40 people traveled nearly 200 miles yesterday to help their distant neighbors in Hillview, Illinois. I kind of feel like if I was in the same position and down, I want somebody to help me. And you can't expect anyone to help you when you're down if you don't help them when they are. Oh, I thought maybe I could be of some help to relieve somebody that maybe has been here for quite some time. Well, I saw the hogs on top of the hog house roof last Sunday night, and what a uh, humongous compound misery that's going to be for those people to uh, clean that mess up after the water goes back down. By then, it's sad, but most of those people will be forgotten about. The volunteers worked all day long under a blazing sun. Most of them were moved by what they saw. I couldn't believe how incredibly, how vast the problem really is and we're just in one you know one area it's just incredible we went down and we looked at the river and it was way over its banks houses underwater it's it's pretty devastating a lot of the people were surprised we came from so far away but that's what life's all about it's helping somebody else i kept remembering telling my class last year that it just takes one person to to help to make a difference and when one person, when a whole bunch of people start doing that, hopefully we can. In Hillview, Illinois, Suzanne Stevens, TV 18 News. This is Hillary Wakay. In the fight to save 11 miles of levee along the Illinois River, every volunteer counts. If they wouldn't be here, most of these levees wouldn't be where they are now. It's important. And the more people that come out right now, the more important uh, the more we're going to save. Some of our volunteers worked side by side with Dixon, Illinois inmates serving time in a boot camp. We worked real hard. We came out here early and we got a lot of work done. And then when the inmates came, they, they really helped. They've done a lot of work. Here, you know, you, you can get right into the meat of it and see, see what it's really like as opposed to seeing it on TV because you, you can't get the scope of it unless you're actually here. Just in Hillview alone, Levy Commissioner Claire Wilson estimates he needs 200 people on the levee a day and another 80 making sandbags to keep up with the high water. Coordinating the massive effort is a tough full-time job. Getting the sandbags and the lumber to the spot that it's needed, uh, when you move them a little ways, getting the boats to, to go on upstream or downstream, uh, letting them know and, and letting uh, the, the, the people on the ground know and then letting the people that are supplying them know uh, getting dinners to them, getting cold water to them, um, it's quite a problem. It's particularly hard getting enough volunteers to help on weekdays. That's why Wilson was so happy to see our folks on a Friday. Ruby Bowman has lived in the Hillview area for 50 years and says it's wonderful when people come from as far away as Indiana to help her community out. We have a lot of prayer groups going in other areas away. And it, it's, it's really fantastic the way people work together. With them being here today, we could put our crew strictly putting sandbags on the levee, and I think we picked up the day to day and a half today by them being here. All we got to do is finish down here about a 300-meter stretch down here, and th this corner's pretty good go tonight. Other than that, I think it'd been, a, it'd been water over the top. In Hillview, Illinois, Hillary Wakay, TV 18 News. Flooding conditions in the Midwest aren't any better today, and in many instances, they are worse. Levees all along the Mississippi River and its tributaries are bursting. The wear and tear of the flooding has finally taken its toll, wiping out houses like this one south of St. Louis. Our local efforts to contain flooding in Hillview, Illinois, were also unsuccessful. The levee, uh, a group of us uh, worked Friday to uh, shear up the, the levee in Hillview, Illinois, and TV18 organized the, the relief effort, and joining us uh, is one of the staff members that uh, went on the trip, uh, Operations Director Tina Parker. Thanks for being with us mm -hmm. today, Tina. We see all the flooding uh, that's taking place, and we see the, the homes being wiped away. What, did, what was your first impression when you got to, to Hillview? Well, when the bus pulled up, we arrived at a farm, and we didn't see any water. There was a lot of sand, and people were bagging. And then after we had been there for about half an hour, they took out groups of people to the creek. And that's where we saw all the water, and it was devastating. The area that we worked on, um, the creek was supposed to be the size where you could jump over it. And it was probably three quarters the size of the Wabash downtown. 
it was just unbelievable and it was like five feet high and it was a creek and then we drove down took the boat down to the river and we saw a town that was totally wiped out you could see houses peeking over the water you know, it was devastating the people that you talked to like you also went and worked with in, in that situation it's got to be real difficult to try to keep the spirits up and, and to continue working to try to save your town what what were the impressions like well a lot of people told us they were glad to see us there's no question about that but on the other hand they they, they didn't seem to be afraid at all we we dealt very closely with levy commissioners who are people with their farmers who were elected to be in charge of that particular levy and um, they were very you know, very aggressive in what they were doing but i don't think they were they didn't seem all that fearful and, we, and I, I think we were very confident especially having worked with some national guardsmen there that uh, this thing was going to be fine yesterday we got a I, I listened on the radio uh, when i heard they were having some troubles and all of a sudden cbs was reporting that this hillview levee broke and i almost drove off the road it just it, it was a total total shock and the frustration just wouldn't believe efforts you think you know, after after working so hard on Friday, do you, it, does it seem fruitless for the work that you did? No, because um, I think we let the people there know that we cared and that we wanted to help, and they really appreciated it. And the volunteers from the Lafayette area felt really good about doing it. And I called one of the helpers, one of the volunteers, last night and told her that the levee had broke, and she w just broke out in tears. It, it was really hard knowing that that happened, but knowing that you tried to help prevent it, it does make you feel better. A lot of hard work. It's an amazing thing, too, I think, for me, because, and, and, and Tina organizes so many of the events that this station gets involved with. And, you know, we get involved with things like the telethon and, and the Jerry Lewis telethon and try to raise money for people and things like that. But, boy, this is one where the people here, the, the members of our staff especially, were involved. It's something a little bit different. There's Joel Allen with his shirt off, you know. We're, we worked, and we worked really hard, and, and uh, it, was, it was more than just talking about it, but it was really a diving in experience, trying to, to, to help somebody just as directly as you possibly can, uh, and then to see that, uh, see that go away, it was just, just tough. Something you'd do again. Oh, definitely. In fact, um, one of the volunteers suggested maybe after this is over, going back and helping cleaning up, because it's going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The people that went, all ages? Oh, yeah, we had 16-year-olds, we had 70-year-olds, we had women, we had men. It was, it was amazing. It was neat seeing everybody working side by side. And they did, and even some of the young people, you know, they were, they were going strong all day long. A teenage girl was with us at a levee site lifting sandbags, and she, must, she couldn't have been more than 18. And I tell you, she, she just stayed with every guy, every National Guardsman there and just passed those back. Well, your thanks go out to both of you and to the rest of the group that went out and helped because I know you probably a little special little place in those people's hearts in Hillville, Illinois. It was a great experience. Mm -hmm. Tina, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. Well, more news right after. It was a shock when the news came yesterday that the levy a group from Lafayette helped to reinforce on Friday had failed. It wasn't the sandbags, but the earth that gave way. Well, in this week's Eye on Lafayette, photographer Darren Pope shows some of the hard work that went into building up that levee. it's important that we all do our part to help out when we can and I kept remembering telling my class last year that it just takes one person to, to help to make a difference and when one person when a whole bunch of people start doing that hopefully we can pick the bags up and lay the bag down you understand that there you go now you're doing it. Come on with it. I need a Heads up. Let's in the cat. In the belly, down in the belly. I heard a mighty roar. I heard 
you heard in there. That was a group of inmates from one of the Illinois correctional systems working side by side with the guardsmen and the civilians and everybody worked very, very hard on Friday. Did a good job. Thank the residents of Hillview fought the Illinois River for more than three weeks, but to no avail. The river broke through the levee and flooded the area. Last week, we sent a busload of people to help sandbag. Today, our cameras went back to see how our friends are doing. Hillary McKay reports. Just five days ago, Hillview, Illinois, looked like this. But on Sunday, the levee residents and Lafayette area volunteers worked to save burst. Now homes, farms, and fields are under at least 10 feet of water. Even though it's three miles from the river, the farm where tens of thousands of sandbags were made was not spared. Sand that never made it to the levee now sits in four feet of water, leaving local residents asking, what if? This either had to be a rodent or a, or a failure between two types of dirt that caused this. Um, and, and if we could have been right there when it happened, might have been able to throw enough sandbags in the backside of it to make it uh, whole. Been able to patch it the next morning going on. The irony is that the sandbags and the plastic and the wood that they built up on top of the levee held. The water didn't go over the top. It just blew right through the side. The result is another two and a half miles of river. As it ripped through the levee, the water uprooted entire trees and families. Those left homeless by the flood are staying with relatives or attempting to find a new home. The realtors are probably very busy right now uh, trying to find homes for everyone. And it's in a small area, it's very hard to find a nice place to live. Now there's no phones, few roads, and with most or all of their crop underwater, there's little to do but wait for the water to recede. Worst things that we've got is the, the part of the crop that's still yet out of the water partially. You've got to watch it die. You know, it'll start dying today or tomorrow. I'm beginning to start smelling it a little bit now, and, and, it, and this will continue until it completely dies. Wilson estimates the flood spared only 40 of his 1,100 acres of corn, a loss of about $400,000. Hillary Wake, TV18 News. Boy. Mm, that's Having hard to watch. Yeah, having been there yourself. I have to tell you, we spent a lot of time out there, and it's, it's just really hard to believe that that's all underwater at this point, because those people thought they had it saved, I'll guarantee you. Well, yeah, I remember you saying last week you didn't even see hardly any flooding. No, well, well, there was. There, it was high, mm -hmm. but it, you, you, they thought they had it made. They thought they did it, and it didn't work, and that's really a shame. It's too bad. It, as we heard, though, it, didn't, it, it wasn't because of the work the people of Lafayette right. did. Uh, those sandbags would have done the job, but somehow or another that led to broke. Residents of Hillview, Illinois, fought the Illinois River for more than three weeks. A busload from Lafayette pitched in Friday to pile sandbags, but the river still broke through the levee. Hillary Wakay tells what that means for the folks who live there. Just five days ago, Hillview, Illinois, looked like this. But on Sunday, the levee residents and Lafayette area volunteers worked to save burst. Now homes, farms, and fields are under at least 10 feet of water. Even though it's three miles from the river, the farm where tens of thousands of sandbags were made was not spared. Sand that never made it to the levee now sits in four feet of water, leaving local residents asking, what if? This either had to be a rodent or a, or a failure between two types of dirt that caused this. Um, and, and if we could have been right there when it happened, might have been able to throw enough sandbags in the backside of it to make it uh, whole. Been able to patch it the next morning going on. The irony is that the sandbags and the plastic and the wood that they built up on top of the levee held. The water didn't go over the top. It just blew right through the side. The result is another two and a half miles of river. As it ripped through the levee, the water uprooted entire trees and families. Those left homeless by the flood are staying with relatives or attempting to find a new home. The realtors are probably very busy right now uh, 
trying to find homes for everyone and it's in a small area it's very hard to find a nice place to live. With most or all of their crop underwater, farmers will have to earn money in other ways. Try to regroup and um, see what the government's going to offer us money-wise or interest-wise and see if we can get through this and eventually probably in two or three weeks after I get everything kind of situated, try to find a job for a while. Worst things that we've got is the, the part of the crop that's still yet out of the water partially. You've got to watch it die. You know, it'll start dying today or t tomorrow. I'm beginning to start smelling it a little bit now, and, and, it, and this will continue until it completely dies. Wilson estimates the flood spared only 40 of his 1,100 acres of corn, a personal loss of about $400,000. Hillary Wickay, TV18 News. A